Hey, welcome back. In this episode, we are going to learn about design governance. To achieve an effective return of investment, organizations must prioritize where they will invest. Implementation of security across the organization is also constrained by this. So to achieve an appropriate return of investment on security, the organization needs to first understand and define its security priorities. So what is governance? Governance is how the organization's security is going to be monitored, audited, and reported. Design and implementation of security controls within an organization is only the beginning of the story. How does the organization know that things are actually working? Are they improving? Are there new requirements? Is there a requirement for mandatory reporting? Similar to compliance, there may be external industry, government, or regulatory standards that need to be considered as well. Another equally important thing to keep in mind is risk. What type of risk does an organization face while trying to protect identifiable information, intellectual property IPs, and financial information? And who may be interested or could use this information if stolen, including external and internal threats as well as unintentional or malicious? A commonly forgotten but extremely important consideration within the risk is addressing disaster recovery and business continuity. Next thing we need to keep in mind is about compliance. Are there specific industry, government or regulatory requirements that dictate or provide a recommendation on criteria that your organization's security control must meet? Examples of such standards, organizations, controls and legislations are ISO 27001, NIST, and PCI DSS. The collective role of organization is to manage the security standards of the organization through their life cycle, which include define, improve, and sustain. Define means you can set organizational standards and policies for practices, technologies, and configurations based on internal factors. So the next state is improve state. In this state, you can continually push these standards incrementally forward towards this ideal state to ensure continual risk reduction. And the last stage is sustain. This is where you will ensure the security posture doesn't degrade naturally over time by instituting auditing and monitoring compliance with organizational standards. We need to define a clear line of responsibility as well. Clearly documenting and sharing the contacts responsible for each of these functions will create consistency and facilitate communication. Based on our experience, with many cloud adoption projects, this will avoid confusion that can lead to human and automation errors that create security risk. So first we need to designate groups or individual roles that will be responsible for these key functions. The first one is network security group or individual role. So what is the responsibility for this network security individual or a group? This typically include existing network security team, configuration and maintenance of Azure firewall, network virtual appliances, web application firewalls, NSGs, ASGs, etc. Second role is network management. So who is part of this network management? Those are typically existing network operations team and the responsibility is enterprise-wide virtual network and subnet allocation. Third group is server endpoint security and this group includes typically IT operations and security team. The responsibilities are monitoring and remediating server security which include patching, configuration and endpoint security etc. Fourth group is incident monitoring and response. This team includes security operations team and their primary task are to investigate and remediate security incidents in security information and event management or source console. 
Another group is policy management. This is where GRC team and architecture team reside. Their responsibilities are setting definition for use of role-based access control, Azure Security Center, Administrator Protection Strategy, and Azure Policy to govern Azure resources. And finally, we have Identity Security. And this is where security team plus identity team jointly work together. And their responsibility includes setting direction for Azure AD directories, PIM and PAM usage, MFA, password synchronization configuration, and application identity standards. The last step is to audit and enforce policy compliance. So ensure that the security team is auditing the environment to report on compliance with the security policy of the organization. Security teams may also enforce compliance with these policies. Organizations of all sizes will have security compliance requirements, industry, government, and internal corporate security policies all need to be audited and enforced. Policy monitoring is critical to check that initial configurations are correct and this is continuous to be compliant over time. In Azure, you will take advantage of Azure policy to create and manage policies that enforce compliance. Like Azure Blueprints, Azure policies are built on the underlying Azure Resource Manager capabilities in the Azure platform. That concludes this episode. In the next video, we're going to learn about how can you recommend a solution for using Azure policy. I will see you in the next one. Until then, take care.